Good day, mate. Today we're going to talk to Selling Our Ruby Rose. No, we're looking to you. Lifestyle and life, rich and famous, I'm <laughs> born with the winds. <laughs> Nick, That's a rule of life. No, I can't do sign language, but this is Jason of Gone with the Wind and his beautiful wife, Nick. As you know from their awesome YouTube channel and other social media, they are sailing around the world. They have got some amazing high quality videos. I don't even need to point them out, but there are links below in case you've been living under a rock for all these years and don't know of them. So they come from the RV world to the sailing world. They have this amazing catamaran with cats <laughs> and as such we went to patreon we asked our patrons listen what questions do you want to ask them what do you want to know because we, we make no bones of it we're looking for a new boat we're looking at this lifestyle their lifestyle and so these are the top questions from our patrons if you didn't get your question answered it's not that we're being mean it's just that we've got <laughs> so many that we just wanted to pick the ones that are most pertinent so the ones about the cats brilliant i'll answer those in a separate email and send some pictures and absolutely love hearts <laughs> Meanwhile, in reality, it was like with uh, sheets of paper and the emails, and you're like, nope, stupid question, not answered. Now I'm going to do this thing with paper and for that one. <laughs> Shout anyway. out to Keeler, that was horrible. Shout out to Keeler. No, no they're wrong. Genuinely, they're all really good questions. Yeah, so so thank you, everyone, who responded to that um, post. Uh, we really appreciate your input, and you guys always have the best questions. You really do. Okay, so we're going to start with Zari, who asked a few questions, but um, I just picked the two that I thought were probably the most prevalent. Um, one is, again, a really great question, thank you Zari, which is that everyone says, and we preach this all the time, if you're going to start sailing, buy something small, learn how to sail like a small monohull, and then kind of like work your way up in kind of bite sized pieces, but you two just went straight for the 43 foot catamaran, and then, yeah, you know, went to Bahamas for like, what, a year or so? No, six months. Six months, right. So. The maximum we were allowed without right. buying a long, getting a long stay. Yeah. Okay, and then you were just like, okay, so we're going to cross the Pacific now. Like, you really dived right into it. So how did you find that process? Well, look, we never claim to be intelligent, <laughs> nor do the smart thing. Do, do as we say, not as we do. Yes. We, we tell, we preach the same thing, like, go practice on a small boat, go do a charter. If you're thinking about a catamaran, do a captain charter out here in French Polynesia or whatever place you'd like, because then you can learn if you like catamarans or not. Right, well, and we... Or took down. sailing classes, but we didn't do that until after we had already purchased the boats. So we learned on our boat, which was great, but that's not what we would encourage others to do. Honestly, we would encourage you to take the classes first, get out there, join a local like sailing club, get out on some regattas. There's always somebody looking for somebody to crew or help out on like little day races or cruising, whatever. And you can learn so much more about the boats. It'll help you decide what you like, what you don't like, and what you want in a boat. We had unique. Yeah advantages in certain areas because we've already been living small. Yeah, the sailing industry doesn't like it when we say it, but RVs and sailboats are extremely similar as far as the systems go and all of that. Yeah. And we had this fallback plan. I don't think we ever really talked about it much, but we said, if for some reason I can't handle sailing the open sea or whatever, we can always coastal cruise and stay in marinas. It's not any different than doing an RV park, which it's does not very sound romantic. Similar. No, but, it, but it's like, uh, it's land yacht, actual sea yacht, they are very similar in so many ways. So instead of driving our home um, from place to place and dealing with whatever those bureaucracies are, it's now sailing our home from place to place. Now granted, the marine environment is exceptionally harsh yeah. and adding water and you know the fact that you can drown and die. To the whole what? scenario, does <laughs> add a little. Wait, what? <laughs> what is that for this? No one told me <laughs> but that was not the brochure. No, no it wasn't. No, no. Wait, okay, you never it here first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's not what we would advise, but we feel like we knew enough about what we wanted and how we live. And we had a backup plan. And we had a backup plan. Yeah, I think that's that was. So this is a question from me. How? What made you um, decide, or how did you decide what you wanted in a boat? So obviously there are some similarities between, you know, kind of RVing and, and sailing, but you know, we have been sailing for, I don't know, like nine years and I still am learning about what I need in a boat. So what, how did you kind of decide that? Big enough space mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. So we knew we were going to be, we work a lot. So we knew like big tables where we can set out our computers and have all our crap out while we work. Mm -hmm. And then enough space to then put it away when we want to entertain or have a break or from all away. the work. Yeah. yeah. And then for me, galley up, having her there. I know for Nikki, like the helm thing was a big deal for you. Yeah, I, I did not want to be separated because I like to cook a lot, so I didn't want to be. Mm -hmm. He's 
I didn't want to raise bridge deck. Yeah, raise, yeah, raise, yeah, raise flybridge. Yeah. Um, so I, that was the, like a big win for me, and a lot of the. Which really is only bigger boats. It, was, it really was not like uh, it, we came up with this random list of everything we looked at online. So you're looking at boats is basically in a brochure, and it's funny what our list went from. We came to Ken, our broker, and we were like, "All right, so here's everything we want you boat," and he's like, "Oh, that's cute, kids. Come on, let's go out and really look at some boats, and then we'll come back to this list." And but that was we lucked out with a really good broker, yeah. and that was I. That's what gave us the confidence to set sail to the Bahamas and then further on to the Pacific. Yeah, so we, you know, and of course we had some friends who were sailors, and so that helped. And then we talked to a bunch of other sailors. Yes, yeah, so getting to be a part of the community was yeah. like key, key for us. And starting and, in Florida specifically, because there's so many people that sail and that follow other blogs. So if you have a blog and you're starting, like, you might get reached out, and like, people might reach out and say, hey, let's go sail together, or let's cross the Gulf Stream together. You know, yeah, or so hey, cute. we're taking on a delivery. If you want some real experience, you know, come jump on board. So taking advantage of those little opportunities, we're good at listening to what ha yeah. people have to say, I guess, and, and trying to absorb as much as we can. About. It's interesting because um, we put a video about this, out about this about a year and a half ago, before we met you discussing the same things. We come from completely different sides of the world and we both come up with the same answer independently without, and there's no kind of, we haven't like swap notes beforehand. Mm -hmm. It is about engaging in the community that you're in. Uh, sailing is almost 100% a very, very inclusive community. Yeah. People will help you. And the an analogy I always give is that if you need a screwdriver and you want to go up and down the street that you're in asking for a screwdriver, in some parts of the world they'll shoot you to the door. <laughs> Most of the time they'll say no, but you can go to any boat in an anchorage and ask for a screwdriver and they'll lend it to you. Yeah. No questions. Or, or spanner. Spanner. That's a big <laughs> That's a rain man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a spanner too, Jason. Yes, that's a wrench for you Americans, right? Oh, is it not a spanner? No, that's a, no. that's a speed wrench, right? Okay, so this is a very common question. I think everyone gets asked this all the time, but what do you wish that you had known before you started, before you bought the boat and started cruising? You could fall off and die. I mean, I just learned that today. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> mm, were you eating a lot of drugs for that? Yeah. Uh, let's see. No, you, you know, know, in my head, I'm oh, sorry. Everything? Yeah. I mean, honestly, everything, but there's no way. You cannot know so many things until you're out here. Yeah. We, you know, Jason referenced this on our Pacific Crossing, but um, Pat and Allie of uh, Bum Buzzle were definitely big mentors to us. Yeah. Uh, we had read the books and everything else that we had a chance to meet up with them over the years. And so, of course, we had lots of discussion around it. And the thing is, is you, you know, you would read his book. his book and you would read about these experiences at sea and it doesn't matter how many times, and even our readers, our fellow sailors, they'd be like, do you understand how much work this is? It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of money. I mean, you hear these repeat phrases over and over, but you cannot know or yeah. fully comprehend those things until you're in it. And so even though we thought we were prepared, we still weren't fully prepared because I don't think you can be. And for so much of it, I don't think you can do all the preparation and reading you want until you're out there. You, you just got to learn by yeah. doing. Yeah. And for me, the, the dream was um, the Kennedys up in the Northeast, you know, with your scarf on and your striped sweater and your perfectly polished, teak, beautiful, long sailboat and just out there just <laughs> cigar in hand and what I realized is like a bunch of dirty stinky smelly sweaty like you know it's Grease just monkeys. It's so yeah. different than the, the like what was in my head yeah but again, it really is agree 100% yeah. we came from different backgrounds you had the RV came to sailing like almost as newbies and had a huge learning curve we came to we came to this lifestyle as liverpools from a long history of just sailing we've been sailing for years and still once we got on board as liverpools the learning curve was huge yeah it, it, that compared to weekend sailing or week sailing or going away and we're it, still learning and we, we still every day we're like yeah and you've in all fairness in the last four days we've been here we've learned so much yeah not just through being taught by your good selves but also <laughs> by like you just uh, observing and thinking yeah. That's a better way of doing it yeah. than I would do it. And, yeah. that, and again, it's about, you can read books, you can watch YouTube videos, you, until you get out there and you learn you know, yourself. That, that, and, and we just look at we are sponges of information. We are. Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. And, and every single sailor you meet, that's exactly... Something, yeah. 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 It's and everyone does like things slightly differently yes. as well. So what's right for one person definitely won't be right for the other. Putting gin and grapefruit juice together. I told you people Genius. look at me weird. Jeez. Gin and grape, a really good gin with just fresh grape. Oh. It's yeah. excellent. It is, it is, we can attest. We can. Forget okay. the topic. 
Paul, um, you wanted to know. Are you valuing or? Yes. Okay, yeah, great. Touch my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have separated. She can't kick you. Yeah. My nose are in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. This you too. is a bad corner. This is like your first <laughs> the naughty corner. <laughs> she said us here. I just want to point that out. Okay, Paul asked, um, why did you decide to buy a boat instead of, say, for example, of being around Central America or? Uh, but the whole idea is we love travel in general. So, um, our our vehicle is just a vessel. Yeah, and the best way to see all of these beautiful remote islands hands down on a sailboat. The best way to see the U.S. is by a road trip. Mm -hmm. So whenever we get to certainly Australia, hands down, we're doing an inland road trip. We will get a caravan and do that. New Zealand, same thing. We can, when we were in Ecuador, we had to take a road trip to go inland. There are certain places you go and you need wheels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then there are places you go and you definitely need a hull. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you need a boat. And that is exactly why we did that. Oh. So the and if one day there will be a rocket because it's the only way you can get to Mars. Cool. So Elon Musk, <laughs> yeah. the first YouTube you astronaut, they're here. <laughs> Willing to be You sent a monkey into space, why not send me? <laughs> make some I want that. That's going to be your tagline for your next YouTube channel. <laughs> you sent a monkey into space, why not me? <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> so on that, but on that point, so yeah. literally we land in Tahiti and no, Nikki and I are both looking at each other going, I never thought I would be in Tahiti. Like yeah. if you would have told me five years ago when I was a land lover that I'd be sailing in Tahiti or even just visiting Tahiti, it's just, it seems so unattainable. And New Zealand and Australia, it seems so unobtainable by flight because it's so long. It's As Americans, we really think if you went on vacation to like Australia, yeah, we're like, you must be loaded. Like, yeah. cause that was what we thought like really wealthy, rich, famous people did. Not yeah. something yeah. that like the average person. Or you had a month to spare because you were going to back Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's, I mean, hello, it's a freaking long flight. Yeah. 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 So the idea of kind of exploring the islands, that came first. Places we couldn't drive to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And we wouldn't want to pay to fly to. It's too expensive. Yeah. Do you want to check the camera? Okay. Yep. I'll be back in 10 seconds. Let's check the camera down it. I want to make sure that basically yeah, the battery's is actually fine. Good. How long will you guys record? It will just continue. Oh, it, right. it, it splits up into 30 minute clips, but then there's not the light. Like, Same as yeah. Same as continuous. Yeah. Just like mine. Just like that. Anyway, next question. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question for my love. Jose asks um, Do you adhere to a schedule or do you kind of play it by ear? And how have you found that? I don't know, what are we doing today? <laughs> Nobody knows! <laughs> well, well right, the, the sun's kind of cracked out, so we're probably going to go snorkel. Yeah. yeah. That's all the planning we need. Yeah. Yeah, no, we don't really... Um, Other than looking at general weather patterns and then choosing a destination. Like, we know we can't be here for next cyclone season, or we can't be further west during the cyclone season, so we'll have to rush along, or hurry along, not rush along, to New Zealand, where... Yeah. 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 Or somewhere we can haul the boat out, whatever. We let, I guess, the weather dictate our schedule a lot, which is every sailor. Yep. And then aside from that, or smart ones, I suppose, anyway, yeah. aside from that, is that's kind of it. We do plan for whatever the next country is going to be, because you have a lot of paperwork yeah. and things you have to think it's about ahead of time. Yeah, so it's planning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's I'm planning New Zealand really. now, and it's like eight yeah. months away. Yeah, because okay. you have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so other than that, but I couldn't tell you where we're going to go yeah. or what we're going to do. You don't plan or, more than you really have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep things fluid. I think we're the same, and I think that we've learned that through doing it the other way by like planning to quite, I don't know, planning obsessively. That was my fault, um, and we've learned that, that really doesn't work. No, like, plans just get crushed. Well, yeah. Well, the other thing is, you know, we read a lot, you both read a lot of guides and you read a lot of internet reviews, and sometimes you'll turn up in a place and it just will not be what you planned it to be, and you'll be like, I did expect this either positively or negatively. Sometimes we've been to places where like this place is amazing, like we're not spending a week here. Let's just. And I think a rolling schedule, and we have, I suppose, we've sailed on both sides of the Atlantic now, and there is, it is seasonal. Yeah. It is seasonal, so you do know that you kind of have to be in a certain place at a certain time, so you can't just drag it out, yeah. like, yeah. for months on end, when you've got places to go. But, yeah, agreed. Okay, um, Alex says, apart from, obviously, us, who else would you like to sail with? Do you have anyone that you're like, oh my god, I would love to jump on that boat, or I'd love to have them come and stay? I would love to jump on like a hydrofoil catamaran and see like, I'm sure I would throw up like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like an oracle or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, like be super excited. Does anybody else sail? Like all we know is oracle from the United States. There's nobody else, right? It's just the USA. That's the only person in, in the race, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Star, oh, really? um, so we met Ben Ainsley. Yeah. Right. He, used to, he was the American, oh, American yeah. Cup skipper. And he was, okay, there's a story behind this, but yeah, he, he, he Ben Ainsley, that's who you need to sound with. Like, he is like yeah. super experienced. He's British, very posh, very nice, very kind of, uh, um, you know, endearing when I kind of like rushed him in Portugal. Was it? <laughs> like, a real super fanboy, and he didn't like, oh, you freak. But anyway, so yeah, that's who we, that's, yeah. And I would, I too would love to go on one. The thing about that is, you know, you could get off after kind of hours. Yeah, yeah. Doing yeah. like 30 knots. Oh, for yeah. Like, yeah, you've been looking. Yeah. 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 I'd spew too. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. So, other than like big time racers being on like one of those boats for that experience, other than that, like who else I'd want to like actually sail with? Probably people that aren't even around anymore. Yeah. You know, like the, like who wouldn't like Magellan or even Joshua Slocum or Captain Cook? Captain Cook. <laughs> I mean, really, like, or Benjamin Franklin for Pete's sake. You know, like anybody oh. who was like an explorer of old days, like, can you imagine putting them on our boat yeah. today? Yes. Like, their minds would be blown and they would call us a couple of, you know, like, yeah. yeah, totally. Just because. And then you're just going to drop anchor and hang out? No, no, you got to plunder. <laughs> <laughs> We still do. Like, oh. Wait, that's not what you do when you, you get under the bar, right? <laughs> For me, um, number one person I want to sail with, or just even want to talk to, is Robin Knox Johnson. Yeah. Like he is like the hardcore, archetypal rum drinking British. You know, I yeah. have so much admiration for that man, and still do, because he's I don't know he's seventy something and he's still tearing the ass out of life. Yeah. and that is inspirational to me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, what? Hang on. Tony asks, uh, since arriving in the South Pacific, have you felt less connected with your followers? Because there's like very slow internet connection here, you're physically much further away, you're not maybe meeting them as much. Oddly enough, we've met more patrons probably here in French Polynesia. Oh, yeah. Than Ecuador and Panama combined, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but I would say that would be exclusively our, our patrons. We've had several people who were either coming on their own sailing trips or whatever the case may be. And then, of course, we had a big patron meet of ourselves. And then your mum came out. Your mum. <laughs> Yes, uh, but in general, that is a very good question. And yes, we have less connectivity, so we do communicate less with like friends and family, and even our followers. Mm -hmm. um, so we do feel slightly more disconnected. I feel like I have less time than ever for yeah. whatever reason, you know. So yeah, it, it is. You definitely, I feel more isolated out here yeah. than I did when we were. We used to be able to go to a, like to do an upload. We'd go to a pub and we'd get to meet like people, mm -hmm. and we'd do an upload for a couple of hours. It'd be done. It's like boom, fast. Have a couple of beers, have a pizza. We're good. Like here, you go to a restaurant and it's not possible to upload. And then there's barely rarely anybody there at the restaurants, and it's like it's just sort everything's of everything's just hot. Yeah, there might yeah. be a local there, but Maybe. your conversations can be insanely limited because we don't speak Tahitian or, or French, French, and our French is minimal. Like, sure, we can order and ask where the bathroom is and how to get to like the government Not office, the but that doesn't equal a conversation. <laughs> just the word grapefruit over yeah. and over again. <laughs> you can't. Oh, oh, there oh, is oh, no oh, such oh, thing as a serious conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Nikki, for trying. Yeah, yeah, I made an effort. There you go. That's as good as it goes. Um, and what is your favorite cruising round so far? Because you've been to some really interesting places, yeah. like the Bahamas. Obviously, a lot of American cruisers do make it to the Bahamas, which is a great place for socialization. Absolutely. By the way, yeah. yeah. And isolation. It's amazing because in the Bahamas, we were able to sail like the Raggeds and the Jumentos. Like very few people go there, and you'd be and all by yourself. All yeah. by ourselves. Yeah. And then we got to hang out with some locals and get just totally blitzed. Yeah. Accidentally, well, Nikki did. That was fun. Uh, is there a link that we can? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 on, it's, it's on video. Funny. Yes, it is. Everybody's like, oh my god, it's strong Nikki. Yeah. Uh, now here we are, like in South Pacific. We sailed a quarter of the way around the world. And, and there's like, to, like hundreds South America, of America, Ecuador, yeah. and uh, Panama. Like, quite. As far as cruising grounds go, the Pan Panama on the Caribbean side just blew us away with their coral. Okay. Yeah, like, like the diving and the snorkeling. Really, their, their reefs and their underwater life yeah. is was surprisingly amazing. Uh, so much so that we get here and we're like, it's good. But I don't know if it's it as good. Yeah, yeah, which I never would have thought. Never, never. We just kept thinking, we got there and we were working and we were like, if this is what it's like here, can you imagine? imagine French Polynesia is like. Yeah. And now granted, we've not been to the two emotes yet. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have our minds blown when yeah. we get there and we'll be like, what? But um, yeah, it was surprisingly it was really cool. amazing. And another thing is the, the Sound Blast Islands. Did yeah. you guys visit them? No, no we, we haven't. Oh, yes. We'd love yeah, to okay. yeah. So people email us now or leave comments like, well, when you landed on that island, did you go talk to the village elder? 
or the chief or whatever and we're like ah oh, that doesn't really exist here because there's so many cruisers like you uh -huh. don't need to do that no. it's not expected but the locals will come up to your boat sometimes and say hello yeah. but like in san blas you literally have to go to the island talk to the elder and ask for permission to fish yeah or, okay like, so that very much exists in that and then the san blas is just such a unique place mm -hmm. probably what this was like 10 years ago or 15 years ago yeah, yeah. in some so, aspects yeah, yeah. And the world is getting smaller, but you know, it's a double edged sword. Yeah. 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 Tourism is increasing. Like, being a traveler is becoming like yeah. a big thing. So, there are more and more and more of us out there exploring the world, which is changing the dynamics of things. Yeah. Okay, so um, another question that uh, Tony had was you have had uh, some pictures from the free view before um, for a little while, I think between Bahamas and Panama. Mm -hmm. And you've had non patron crew kind of on and off yep. since then, but you've not had any other patrons come to crew for you. So tell us a little bit about why that is and what you're doing instead. Yeah, so um, really scheduling is, as we all know, is very tricky if you don't know where you're going or where you're going to be there. Um, boat projects, um, obviously, we don't want to invite a patron on board and then just make you work for a month. Uh, so there's just been so much that's been happening. Um, and in transit and uncertainties that we just didn't feel comfortable even trying to invite anybody out. And then aside from that, we work a lot. Yeah. So having anybody on board for long term, unless they're actively a part of what we're doing, like filming, editing, and the whole thing, it really, it just, like, we focus a lot on that. It is It almost distances job. us from our patrons and the fact that we're just at a computer, like, don't bother us, don't bother us, don't bother us. Like, we're working, it seems like, nonstop. And then we feel bad because they're here. So... Yeah, so we feel like shorter stints are better. And so we did a big meetup here in Tahiti. And um, we definitely foresee a lot more of those. Like We'd love yeah. to just like dedicate a week, go have some fun, get to know people, and do that. And, and then we can have 10 or 15 or 20 people come out and all hang out exactly. and have this community versus just giving one, one person, person. You know, reward that once a year. Yeah, yeah and that, or even twice, whatever. But it's like we feel like there's got to be a better way to... I guess interact with more people versus just one because then it feels like a name drawn yeah. out of a yeah. hat and it's like this one lucky person but what about the rest of the community so you know it's always insightful or whatever but also being on camera filming editing like all of that yeah if that's what our whole community is about and I think Dallas is always an excellent example of yeah. always incorporating that but people have to be on long term we have a lot of people that we tried to get out um, actually to come out and there was an extra patrons we were talking to and every time it was just like scheduling conflicts they couldn't leave work for more than like two or three weeks and we would miss the window because we didn't have a weather window to get to X location so scheduling is a big big damper and we don't discuss all of that all the time because it's boring logistics like yeah. who wants to listen to that yeah. you don't want to sit and watch us work and then plan it's just very boring well, because you're yeah. not a shelter company you're yeah. you know you're, you're running you know the YouTube channel and all the kind of what you put out is information and entertainment at the same time and that has to take priority and unfortunately it does you know if we were if you, we were all charter companies we could you know we wouldn't have all the films to do so yeah. you, know, you do have to kind of prioritize yeah like two weeks ago i sent you a message like okay i'm i'm, got, I'm starting the video edit right now and i'm yeah. going to be done so that way when you're here we'll just get to play and what have i done the past two days well, yeah 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 the thing about us is you don't have to manage our expectations. Yeah, we, we get it a hundred percent. Yeah, and we were, we were relatively close. We came from Australia, which is yeah. not that far for us to get. It, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it you can get there in a day. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah. it, the problem is that you two are so considerate that you would really kind of like want to not let your patrons down, and so it adds another layer of stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then even honestly, in between that, by the time you're actually doing an ocean crossing, working on your boat, you've had. Um, other people on board, because we had Kate on board for three months, and then we took on uh, John from Skeleton Crew uh, Sailing, who was with us for a week, and then we had Dale and Justin, then we had Dan come out. So, I mean, we've had a lot of people and then my family, on board. And then my mom, and then... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and then now we've got you guys. So it does, it, even though it just seemed like we've had a lot of people on board, we have had a lot of people on board, and even since we've been here, it hasn't been on video, but we've had five different patrons come out, and we've had three of them on board. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it was just for the day. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wade asks, uh, we're going back to RVing. So do you miss RVing and did it help with this transition to sailing? And we've already kind of touched on that. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Does, did it help? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think either direction, going from one to the other is... Um, it's tiny living, yeah. isn't it? And there's a lot of... Limited resources. and yeah. 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 So I think that's a, it's a great transition either way. And 
I think if you've been used to one lifestyle, you'll have great appreciation for the other, but exactly in all of its differences, those will be the things you love. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. for us, that's exactly what it is. Like the remoteness, being able to anchor, um, the, you know, hopping off of the boat and immediately swimming in amazing stuff mm -hmm. is pretty that's, freaking cool. Yeah, that's amazing. But and as far as the RV goes, we could go somewhere in California and be in the snow mm -hmm. and then drive down an hour and you'll be in the desert and then you drive like a half an hour over there and you're like one of the best pubs in the world. Yeah. 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 Like that part from the RV standpoint yeah. is amazing. Like yeah. it's, there's mountains right here, but you're, you're going to be hot and sweaty the yeah. whole time. Like it's just such a different world. Yeah. You can uh, clearly, I mean, just like airplane travel, right? You can be halfway yeah. around the world in a matter of hours. Well, with a car versus yeah. sailing, like you move so fast, which is also a problem. You move so, so fast. fast. We never realized how fast we moved until we got in the boat, and yeah, we were like, fast. "Wow, yeah. we we travel slower." But I don't know. I feel like we absorb sometimes more, sometimes less. It just depends. But yeah. So did I do you, miss it. Did you miss it? Yeah. But yeah, but only. Um, for all yeah. of its differences. Yeah. I think for the same exact reason that like if we all went and got like a really posh hotel right right now, yeah. we would be like, what? Yeah. Look at this shower and all this room. We could all fit in here. You know what I mean? It's like. Let's take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Not together. Yeah. Oh. Um, sorry, Jason. No pineapple. Also, Rachel. Okay. Um, so the next question is uh, kind of related to the RVN thing, which is from Wade. No, it's not. It's from Stuart. Um, which is how is a composting toilet working? So we were introduced to a composting toilet like four days ago, and uh, yeah. How's it working? Yeah, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, well, so the composting toilet, we have a series on it from when we were in the RV. We have not done anything updated. I know, shame on us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's coming up. Coming uh, out. Just put it on the list. <laughs> yes, it's on the list. <laughs> Oh. Yes, <laughs> my composting toilets slowly. are working out. Um, so I mean, but for us, we think they're great. I think it's a fantastic thing. I think there are still improvements that could be made. And um, they actually, have, we've been talking to the owner of the company, Larry. Super nice guy, customer of our, service of our, yeah, our composting toilet. Yeah. Super nice guy, and he said they're actually coming out with some things that I'm really excited about. And I'm like, can you ship me one? You know, to French Polynesia, he's like, oh, I don't know about that. It's yeah. probably like five hundred dollars to ship one here. Yeah, which would be like half the value of the toilet. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, there. I, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I think everybody in the world should be thinking a lot more about um, our our waste. Um, and like water is an issue in so many parts of the world, and we flush so much much of it right so down the toilet. Tell us about the advantages of a composting toilet compared to like a normal marine hedge. So in a marine environment, it is a little bit different. But like this is the perfect example. Right now, we're inside of a barrier reef, so we are in a lagoon, and it is very much illegal to dump your tanks inside this lagoon, and for good reason. You're literally sitting on top of really delicate coral. Well, in some places like Bora Bora, there's only one pass, so. What's in water. the water, like way over here, almost never gets cycled out. Mm -hmm. So think so about that. It really is important when you've got a hundred sailboats in there, everybody can't be dumping their tanks in there. It will affect the health of the water and the reef. Now, if you're out sailing and you're the only boat for hundreds of miles and you're in yeah. 10,000 feet of water, it's a little bit of a different story. Yeah. Your single use is going out or you're no different than a whale, a dolphin or anything else yeah. at that point. So I think that it's very important for when you are close to shore, um, it does make a big difference. And you're, you're not sitting with a... Um, a tank that has to be pumped out mm -hmm. and most of the people like here good luck finding a pump yeah. out facility they don't want you to dump but your only choice is to go out to sea yeah so then everybody's having to move a lot or they have to go out and dump their tanks or they just simply they just don't. don't yeah and that's the, the bigger problem yeah. and there's so, nothing to claw there's no hoses there's no yeah. there's no uh, moving parts yeah. it's to it it's not a macerator so there's no yeah. like you know thousand dollar pump to replace every yeah. two years. They're so low maintenance, they're yeah. so easy. I mean a big thing on the normal marine heads is like getting blockages. Yes. Yeah. We are oh, like living yes. fear of. Yeah. yeah. You invite somebody on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just stuff six or seven baby wipes down there would be like, okay. I'm like no, no yeah. what? you do that in a composting toilet, you're like, oh it's filling it up faster. Well yeah. that's it. it. Like yeah. It doesn't hurt anything. Yeah. It's, you don't want them in there, but that's yeah. not it's not the end of the world. They've yeah. broken nothing. So so, but I have to ask because you've now used that toilet yeah. for four days. Yeah. You've never used a composting toilet before. So what's been your experience? I'm I, what? <laughs> I've been holding it. <laughs> I really need to go for a swim. <laughs> I'm too scared. <laughs> Uh, this is 
what it's been like for the last four days. Uh, okay. Anything serious happens to we've, we've genuinely accomplished nothing. <laughs> I am surprised. I, I, okay, I am like, I've seen them, I'm like, yeah, really? You're going to start doing this hippie shit? Like, it's just one step away from braiding your armpit hair yeah. into like usable clothing. I thought we were doing that! <laughs> no, we're both chasing on a swapping and making lovely tank top. Um, I'm surprised, I'm pleasantly surprised. Mm. Number one, there's zero smell from it. Number yep. two, there is, is, it is super easy to use. Yeah. And Way easier than like Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the yeah. fact that without kind of going into the like the kind of nitty gritty of it, <laughs> that you you separate fluid and solids. Yeah. You know, and that to me is that yeah, I'm 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 not a hundred percent converted, but I'm a damn sight near there. And if you know, we end up with another boat at some point, they're like, Oh but it's got compost and tons of it, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Well, we have the option. Because the thing is, like, I, from the point of view of the environment, I take on board what you're saying about not flushing, and you would, you should never flush anything out in, in, a, in either coral or, or you know, well, any shallow water, any shallow water, yeah. or where there's marine or life or in an enclosed yeah. area. I have no problem with d d flushing anything out to sea. I think yeah. it's good, and it really is just fish food. One time, especially as each time, especially especially each time when you are building it up and you're leaving it in a tank and you're and, and that's for there a for a, a week even. So my issue with toilets on boats or marine heads is the chemicals that people use to stop them smelling. Oh. Oh, and yeah. that is what stuff sings up. So yeah. you're putting stuff out there and it's like, even if you're putting it into deep water, you're still affecting marine life. Yeah. Yes, yes and, you are. And so without, again, going down the whole hippie route, like we firmly believe in trying to use organic things and being organic and not kind of going, well, this blue chemical makes everything smell yeah. like lavender, yeah. but like you just see all the fish floating up at the end. I'm like, well, yeah. you know. It's, it's, yeah. And you know we're we're sailors. We're so deeply connected to the environment. Like it really is our responsibility. Well, when you jump in the water there. and you see the dead coral, and you're yeah. going, oh, yeah. 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 Why? Why is it? Why is it so sad? And oh, and then there is a fish bobbing next to you, and you're like, oh, you yeah. know. And, and unfortunately, you know, how many times have we? I am surprised when I'm snorkeling uh, amongst healthy coral. Yeah, that's a sad fact. That's that that's, sad. that's how the exception rather than the rule, yep. which is harboring really. So yeah, okay. Thank you for answering that question about composting colours. I actually, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely you considering it. I would definitely consider it if we had to like change out our heads for whatever reason. I, I, I hate our, I hate our jobs. Well, or if we, you had three, if you had three heads, the opportunity for three heads, then yeah. having one composting toilet yeah, to absolutely. use when you're in That's a national right. park or yeah. you're in some sort of protected area. Did you guys rip out the existing toilets? Yeah, we did. Yeah, they were they were original. The jabs go. Oh, uh, I hated those things. Oh yeah. Oh, seriously, yeah. you want to hear me rant? You're talking about jabs. <laughs> Twist and lock toilets. Yeah. Right, but it, in all fairness, it's not a brand. It, it's just the pump. It's like the, the it, pump it's style. It's the style yeah. of you're literally yeah, yeah, yeah. pushing yeah. the stuff up a tube yeah. five feet in the air and then yeah. going into it, holding. Yeah, like, it just yeah. it's just a sense. terrible idea. Yeah. 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 Now that we've established that, okay. <laughs> Kirsten asks, um, how do you keep yourself from going stir crazy on long passages? What do you do to keep yourself entertained? Well, if you've been watching, Jason actually does go stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to do. We've had shining moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that's here's Johnny. That's right. Yeah. Here's Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason. Please. Try to be professional. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was not even nothing. Oh, we've been working all week on Jason's amazing accent skills. I think there's going to be a, a Gone with the Winds video where he just goes to totally, all these yeah. He's like Mike Myers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I don't know that anybody avoids going stir crazy. I feel like there's always so much to do mm -hmm. that you're usually feeling like you haven't done enough and you don't usually have the energy to just accomplish people. Yeah. everything that yeah. you need to do. Yeah. When we had Kate on board, because Kate was uh, also a fellow sailor, and that was another thing we learned, like having people with zero experience on board doesn't necessarily help that much, you're just having to teach the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Having people who are experienced and you can just trust them at the helm. Trust them at the helm. And so Kate was fantastic. Even she, you know, she was also, she just usually um, is with her husband. So it's just the two of them as yeah. well. Yeah. So all three of us were marveling at how like well rested we were. Yeah. You know, just thinking like, six wow, hours of sleep. six hours of solid sleep. This is nuts, you know? Yep. So yeah, I. But even still, like, you just aren't feeling like uber peppy all the time. And I'm sure you guys feel the same oh, yeah. way. It's yeah. not like you're, you're not gonna like, I don't know, write a novel or something no. while sailing. Like your your mindset just changes. It really does. And you focus on other things. Right. Yeah, it's true. But there's little things that like make it 
worth it, like the sunrise or a beautiful sunset, or maybe you get some dolphins or some whales in the distance, or like those types of things. Like one time on the way here, I saw a satellite crash. What? Well, I, I'm assuming it was a satellite because it was like really? this super bright <laughs> thing coming slowly down, and then it broke into a bunch of pieces and shh, straight into the water. Was it around Christmas time? No. <laughs> <laughs> Again. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm just seeing this and I'm the only Sandra. one. Nobody's going to believe me. Shana! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we watch okay. Elf over Christmas. So. Yeah, twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it's a great Christmas movie. Maple. Okay, we are on to the last question. Yay. So I only need your attention okay. for another, like, maybe five minutes or less. And Brian asks... See about that. <laughs> Brian um, has a good question, uh, which we get quite a lot as well, which is how do you cope with being alone together all the time? And did RVing kind of prepare you for that pressure? Uh, I would say more than that, our previous lives and jobs prepared us for okay. that because we both were um, independent. Jason was a photographer, as make artist and stylist. We worked together sometimes on jobs. Um, Sometimes. Yeah, not all the time. In the beginning, we worked a lot together. Yeah, sure. uh, and so when you're working together professionally, um, and neither one of you is the boss, you're both just kind of like independent contractors on this job and you're expected to work as a team, we couldn't ever let anything personal happen between the two of us. It was always like, keep it professional, this is the job. And yeah, no so, bickering, no groping. Just to keep it professional. Yeah, groping? that was what I had to tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's remembered. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you the, do you remember that laminated card you had stapled to your back? That's right. <laughs> no big, 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 Yeah, anyway. Uh, so yes, working together, I think, it yeah. was a big one. Um, lots of people, or especially couples, go from having completely separate lives, yeah. only spending like the evenings and weekends together, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm getting stuck 24-7 together. Jason and I were usually stuck 24-7 together, so we were used to like, hating each other half the time and then loving each other the other half the time. I love her all the time. I'm so... Yeah. <laughs> also, also, I would say that we both learned everything at the same time. So we learned how to RV together. We learned how to live small together. And, you know, if we had an argument, we'd just... Just like you have your space, you just go to your thing, you read your book, you go on a walk. You we learned to swim. take breaks yeah. from yeah. each other, and yeah. that was really that important. For sure. Like doing things by ourselves. Like every once in a while, you know, if we need fuel, only one of us goes to get it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, like a lot of times, we go for provision together. Other times, only one of us will go because yeah. it gives you alone time. Yeah. You stay behind and have the boat to yourself. The other yeah. person goes to land and go and does some stuff. So yeah. that yeah. is crucial. Yeah. Yeah. The same goes for sailing because we learned how to sail together we literally everything we've learned not everything we've learned in life we've learned together but almost like it's what it feels like sometimes yeah, yeah. yeah so we are kind of on equal footing at all times but we've also like i guess become accustomed to all these different aspects of life together instead of one person being like three steps ahead of the other yeah and so there's a lot of understanding and so you like it just kind of draws you closer together, I think, in some aspects, or at least it has for us, because you're learning to cope with everything together. So he's my best friend, so when I vent about something, he totally understands exactly what I'm talking about. So at least there's a level of understanding. And I'm also not a worrier, so, like, she's at the helm in a super tight spot at a, at, at a marina, like, coming in on this tiny pier in between these two million dollar boats. I'm not freaking out, like, oh my god, what if she hit something? Oh my god, you know? I don't trust her, blah, blah, blah. No, it's like... There's not that inequality. Yeah, I'm like, just well, if she does hit something, yeah. we have insurance. Oh yeah, it's gonna suck, yeah. but hey, yeah. it's a learning experience. So, I, don't know. I think I'm he also like... feels that way because he's the one that usually damages more things. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I like... do everything. <laughs> 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 of course I'm going to damage one thing. <laughs> I think we better run this up. I'm going to get into like a fist like this. God damn it, I can't work under these conditions. Okay, that really does wrap it up. It does wrap it up. Yeah. So, obviously, uh, some amazing questions. Thank yeah. you to our patrons. Uh, thank you to Nikki and Jason. And, and, you know, it's it's fantastic to get this perspective and kind of have a lot of our questions validated. So, yeah. thank yeah. you both. Yeah. And um, we'll be back with our normal and uh, slightly unprofessional view of life <laughs> very soon. So thank you for watching and goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Great. Thanks. That was yeah, very professional. You. Very. Oh, oh yeah. It was Nick, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, single at him. It wasn't me at all. Dragging his knuckles across the ground trying to get the camera. <laughs>